Hello. Oh, my phone is ringing. Please. Where's your phone? It's hooked up to my decline. It's uh, Leona. Oh, shoot. Um, sorry about that. I, I always think, why would people do that? But I don't expect that my phone runs through my computer also. Maybe go to the other room. Um, it is two minutes after seven, and uh, I'm delighted to see um, 10 attendees tonight. And this is our first fellowship assembly of 2017. So I welcome you all. No, but just leave me alone, okay? And uh, that's full enough to do what they do. I, I am. My name is Ellie. <laughs> And I am uh, past president of this club, a charter member, and I am currently residing in uh, beautiful Manzanillo at the beach. And uh, Peter, would you um, continue with introducing our special guest and let everybody introduce themselves also, please? Too late. Thank you, uh, Ali. So the procedure is that uh, when you introduce yourself, I'd like you to turn on uh, your camera so we can see you, and then you can uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell a little bit about where you are and who you are. And I am Peter Denoy, and I am uh, joined this club on July the 1st of this year, and I spent most of my time in the Dominican Republic. And uh, um, from there, this time, we have indeed internet connection. So luckily, I'm here, especially if I'm going to give my classification talk. It would be nice to be connected. So um, first, I will take our special guest so that she can introduce herself, who is here for a specific reason. Uh, Betty, could you please introduce yourself? I, OK, just a minute. Let me turn this on. Yes, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, I'm uh, past District Governor Betty Skrupnik in the District 5370, same as Ellie was. Uh, I'm presently, my role is a Regional Rotary Foundation Coordinator, which means that I support Foundation Matters in seven districts in uh, Canada and part of the United States, uh, in closing Washington and, and Alaska. Uh, I've been a Rotarian since 1997, and I'm uh, a member of the Glenora Rotary Club in Edmonton, and it's a pleasure to be here uh, once again at eClub Canada One. I think you guys are amazing, and one day I'm sure that this is where my home will be. <laughs> Thank you very much, Betty. Welcome. And uh, we'll go down the list. Bruce, could you introduce yourself, please? I'm Bruce Kleberger, and I'm in Surrey, BC. Yep. Okay. Uh, Andre, are you there? Henry. 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 Henry, are you there? She's on mute. Please. Is that here? Well, she hasn't th turned things on, indeed. I'm here. I'm just having like major. I'm having major technical difficulties because I've got a new. I've got a new device. So, um, Anne Ray McIntosh, I'm in White Rock, about three or four. Well, I don't know, four blocks away from Bruce. You should have walked over and plied him for wine. <laughs> I have so, to uh, over. okay. We have a we did... warning. So we're getting earlier soaked. we did see you on Henry. Earlier we did see you. So um, does your camera work? Because we need to see you later too. Is it working now? How's that? Oh, you have to click on it. No. Well, yeah, there you go. Something happening. Is there you are. Okay. I, yeah, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Yep. And stay inside <laughs> if it's raining. David. <clears throat> David Merritt. Just gonna click it on. Yes, I'm, I'm here in Cochrane at uh, S11 and Windy. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Now we're going to Delvin and Sharon. <laughs> they are, are, oh, there you are. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, it's a slope. Yes. Okay, Delvin and, Sh and Sharon, hello. Sharon, go first. Hello, everybody. Uh, Rotarian since July of last year, I believe. Was in this club? Was it, in this club, yes. Um, past president <laughs> of Chilliwack Rotary Club, uh, joined Rotary in 2005, and live in Chilliwack with lovely Delwyn Stander and his wife, Verna, who invited me for a glass of wine and dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Delwyn Stander, Rotarian oh, since 1991, uh, joined the E-Club a couple of years ago. Happy to be here. All right. Thank you. Welcome, and don't drink too much. You know, until after we're finished, please. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, President Frank, how are you tonight? I know you're working today. Ah. Hello, Peter. Hello, uh, Past District Governor Betty. Uh, for Hello. those those uh, people <laughs> that have that know me, they would know that I'm the president of the Rotary Club of Canada for this year. And looking forward to our festivities for, for tonight's presentation. And just uh, Tammy's in the background here, so I just wanted her, or I wanted you to know that she's here and taking part in a quiet way. So, anyway, thank you very much, Peter. I'll give it back to you. Thanks, Frank. Jean Michel, how are you in Calgary, or are you not in Calgary? Indeed, indeed, I'm in Calgary uh, and uh, sharing a warm plus nine degrees here. Uh, I am a charter member of the E-Club, and I uh, I am also foundation chair of the E-Club, and I'm happy to to uh, hear Betty Schreibner and uh, get to see all the presentations, and I'm supposed to introduce uh, Peter a little later. Thank you. Thank you very much, John Michel. And then, then we have our American friend, John Kay, who is, of course, getting all excited about Friday's special event. Yes, I am indeed. Um, I'm about as close to uh, Bruce as Andre is, um, and he hasn't invited me over for one either, but I have the advantage of uh, having that border between us. And we're going to build a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and the Canadians are going to pay? <laughs> uh, they keep the Americans out of Canada, I think. <laughs> anyway, Friday's going to be a big day for all of us. <laughs> uh, for the world, probably. Cool. Yes. Thanks, John. Are you all recovered from your trip? I am. I'm, 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 I'm recovered enough that I'm. I've got to write something up for uh, for our weekly letter. Um, give you some idea what uh, what we did because it was very very interesting. Awesome. Look forward to uh, to reading about it. Okay, welcome everybody. So, um, Ellie, it's it's not eleven, it's twelve. It's it's uh, actually uh, twelve people because Tammy's in the background and Delvin and and Sharon are sharing and uh, one two. So we have a you know nice uh, nice little group for tonight, and uh, we'll go on. Could you maybe show the program again? Uh, and uh, uh, we'll go on with the next uh, next event on the agenda. Do you wish me to just proceed? Okay. Then. No, not yet. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, ask Frank to uh, to continue with the uh, this part of the program, which are the um, the awards. Please, Frank, would you uh, turn on your video and? Um, Start this part of the meeting, please. Thank you, uh, District uh, Past District Governor Betty. I guess I've been tasked. This is a surprise to me, so I better got to do this off. Uh, I guess standing up or whatever term there is. Um, Betty, 
we'd like you this evening to say a few words in introduction of, uh, or at least about a major donor. And I know you're very active in Rotary now, and I, I've been around you when you were the district governor. So we have someone within our club that's, um, I've been told over so many years has uh, put together uh, enough money to qualify as a major donor. So it was a effort uh, over time. And so um, I'd like you, Betty, to uh, take the forefront here and uh, maybe say a few words about major donors or the foundation. So I'll give it up to you, Betty. Thank you. Wonderful. I'm very happy to do that, and I hope at some point uh, 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 we'll say more about Andre. But it's it's a pleasure to be with uh, eClub Canada One tonight. Thank you so much for inviting me. And in my capacity as the Regional Rotary Foundation Coordinator for Zone 24 West at this point, supporting seven districts, I, I take care of uh, foundation matters and I, I support the districts in any way I possibly can, so I work with the district governors. Catherine Henri McIntosh, I know that you live in White Rock, which is also within my district, as well as eClub Canada One, which is part of, of course, District 5370. Um, Henri, you have been a Rotarian since July 2004. And, and joined E-Club Canada One, August 2014. What a wise decision that was, and lucky for us, that's for sure. Thank you for considering Rotary your charity of choice. Today, we recognize your giving as a major donor, Lever One, which means you have contributed $10,000 US, which will become part of the endowment fund or however you have directed your giving. Thank you. So why Rotary? Why would we give to Rotary? Why did Andre give to Rotary? And I'm sure she's going to share that with us later. But I, I, as a donor and a person giving to Rotary, the Rotary Foundation, I believe, has a strong financial oversight. We've been listed at, with a stellar charity rating. We have a unique funding model which has invited the Government of Canada uh, to look at our funding mo model and become partners with us in, in global grants. It means that we make the very most of every penny of your contribution. Andre's money becomes part of Rotary's life-changing work. Now the Rotary Foundation, I believe, transforms your gift Henri's gift into projects that change lives both right here at home as district grants and around the world as global grants. And as the charitable arm of Rotary, we of course tap into, and you see that in the Club Canada One, uh, you're located all over the world. And we tap into a global network of Rotarians and we invest our time, our money, our expertise into Rotary's priorities, such as eradicating polio and promoting peace. Foundation grants that we're able to implement empower us Rotarians to approach challenges such as poverty, illiteracy, malnutrition, and sustainable solutions that leave in a lasting impact. And, and it's great that we can, we can make this impact club to club in uh, areas all over the world. Henri, when you give to the Rotary Foundation, you support Rotary's work around the world and help ensure our future in Rotary. It's especially meaningful that you have reached this status of giving at this point because this is the centennial year of the Foundation. So what, what a great tribute for your eClub Canada One and for you. So we imagine a fund that started 100 years ago with $26.50, and it's now over $2 billion if we count the bequests, which are commitments and wills of Rotarians. So tonight, Henri, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and all Rotarians around the world, please accept our gratitude as we recognize you, Catherine, 
Henri McIntosh, Rotarian of E-Club Canada One, as a major donor of the Rotary Foundation. Thank you. Let us give Henri a big hand of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Uh, Frank, are you able to continue with uh, any of the other awards, please? Great job, Betty, as always. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, thank you, Betty. Ellie, do you want me to introduce the other uh, Paul Harris uh, people? Is that your, yes, what you please. want? Yes, please. Okay, because. Um, I'll have to leave probably just after that. Okay. Um, just just to let you know, um, Vince Daly is tied up this evening, so he won't be here. Uh, I don't see Gord Lewis or Lou. Um, I've actually sent their pins out to them today, Gord and uh, uh, Delwyn and uh, Lou. Um, I'm really pleased that we have such a significant group of people that are involved with the Paul Harris. Um, I believe that Dalwyn eventually will introduce Andre and she'll have a few words for us. Dalwyn, uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for your hard work. Just so everyone knows, I know Dalwyn has... Um, he uses his skills as a lawyer to uh, raise a few dollars or in lieu of his fees when he does different uh, different things within his law firm. He puts that money into the foundation. So he has a unique approach to it, and it's uh, I'd like to recognize that. Um, Ellie, uh, what can we say about Ellie, past district governor? Uh, first president of our Rotary E Club, uh, a driving force with the E Club. Uh, I appreciate everything you do for us, Ellie. Um, I guess that that's all I can say. I appreciate the fact that people are supporting the foundation because, as Betty said, and I say it as well, it's the bank for Rotary. That's where money comes from for grants and for other um, activities within Rotary uh, projects and what makes service above self and the people in the clubs that gives them a chance to match grants and whatever. So it's a, it's a, it's the way uh, that we can raise money and it's used well within the world. So uh, Ellie, I'll give it back to you. I don't know if you'll be introducing Delwyn and Andre, but uh, I'll leave it up to you. Thanks, Ellie. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Frank. Uh, I have asked uh, for Andre to uh, turn on her video, and um, maybe both Delwyn and Andre could turn on their video, and then Andre could say a word, or... And or and Delvin. Thank you, Ellie. Henri, um, one of the wonderful things about fellowship is you get to know people, and I haven't actually had the chance to speak to you properly yet, so I will do so in the guise of introducing you to the rest of the club as you accept your major award, and congratulations on doing so. What I have been able to glean from your information online uh, and on LinkedIn, because apparently you're on LinkedIn as well as I am, that you are currently employed by Mitro and you are the senior environmental officer on Site C. Must keep you really hopping. Uh, Henri joined Rotary in 2004. I don't know if it was after July or before July, because if it's after July, of course, you're a centennial Rotarian. Um, Henri joined us recently, but she was a previous member of the club in White Rock, and I suspect that that's the, the link with uh, Bruce Kleberger, and joined Rotary, as I say, in 2004. Her classification is environmental services. I'm very interested to see that Henri 
uh, is a volunteer cross ski and triathlon coach. It sounds very energetic. And is also a volunteer tri triathlon official. Uh, most importantly for our purposes tonight, I think it's very interesting to note that she's a Rotarian Foundation benefactor and a Paul Harris Society member. Uh, congratulations, and there's your introduction, Henri. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm, uh, I'm, I've been working on Site C for nine years, and I'm going to Mexico a week Friday, and then I'm going to move into a new job at BC Hydro, so I will have to update my LinkedIn. I am in charge of the Vegetation and Wildlife Program for Site C, not all the environment. There's probably a team of 50 or 60 people doing that. Um, I guess my, when I joined Rotary, I knew nothing about the foundation. It took me a few years to learn about the foundation, and I would make occasional contributions. And the way I got my Paul Harris is the Rotary Club of White Rock used to have what they call five by fives. So you got a team of five Rotarians, and you committed to put in $100, or the equivalent of 100 US every year for five years. And every year, one member of the team's name was drawn, and the club gave the other $500. So I got two all of my Harris's that way. My husband was also a member of Rotary, and he has a Paul Harris, so he has to get some of the credit for, for the major donor award. And then, I just like to say, it was the power of 100. Every month, I have an automatic donation of 100 Canadian dollars that goes to the foundation. And it's taken me 12 years to get major donor status. That's, you know, it was, it was a, it's been a goal of mine. Um, a lot of people ask, well, why did you join Rotary? Why, did you, why do you support the foundation? My mother's a Rotarian, and she told me to join Rotary, so I did. <laughs> That's basically why I joined Rotary. Um, I really believe in the foundation because 100% of the money that gets donated is used. It's held and invested for three years, and then that lump sum money that's made is used for all the administration, and then your donations in year four are what the clubs get in terms of grants and all, and all that. It's also a way to fund sustainable projects. So projects that, you know, they're not reactive to some emergency and, you know, the, the agency's going in, they're going to do work for a couple weeks, couple months, then they're going out. It's sustainable projects that are geared to making lives better in the long term. So improving communities, improving learning, improving maternal health, child uh, survivalship. Um, and it's also worldwide. So those are the reasons that I, I do support the foundation, and I will continue to support the foundation as long as I can. Um, I will send a picture of, I have a lovely crystal, but it's in another room and, and major donor pin, so that um, if you guys want to post it, you can. And thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. You're welcome. Very nice. Very nice. Very well done. Uh, yeah, well done. Um, I'm not sure if Frank, yeah, Frank is still here, but he's muted right now. Um, somehow, something ended up in our box, in our, in our file, in a Dropbox for this particular fellowship mm -hmm. assembly. And I'd like to share that with you because I think this is quite something. So if Frank is still here, maybe he would like to talk on this. And just let me know if you can see this. Oh, I, yes. no, I have no idea there was such yes. a word. Frank, would you like to talk about this? Or? He's gone, Ali. No, he's, he's, he's there. He's opening up his mic. It's not, uh, no, he's it's Tammy Ellie. He's oh, uh, Frank had to leave. Oh, good. Uh, do you know anything about this, Tammy? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I don't. Well, okay, I will just make something up there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How unusual! Awards, uh, oh, has all kinds of awards, which is really wonderful. But I have a feeling that this is from last year. So it would actually be Jim 
who should be presenting this. But uh, it, it came kind of a shock to me to see that uh, the highest growth rate, growth rate of female members in District 5370 is now celebrated. So that means we're getting more female members. So uh, maybe we need to start focusing a little bit on male members as well. Anyway, this is very nice and it's going in our archives photo um, photo um, photo oh, album. Yes. <laughs> um, great. Uh, Bruce, you know something more about this? Not really. Frank Not really. mentioned a couple of awards we had received a couple of months ago and this was among them. Very nice. So uh, congratulations to all those who recruited new members. And uh, this should probably go in the bulletin for next week because this is the first time I see this. Um, so with that, I will close this. And I would like to invite Jean-Michel to introduce our speaker for today. Please, Jean-Michel, would you go ahead, please? Thank you, Ellie. <coughs> and, uh... Thank you, everyone. Congratulations to uh, all those uh, new, uh, those uh, Rosary Foundation donors, and I would like to continue and um, introduce a man who used to be one of my customer in my previous life as a testing lab for for environmental, but especially animal feed and soil samples. So Peter was one of my customers as a, and as a veterinarian and uh, a man who used to work with farmers and uh, and is still, from a, according to the resume, still involved in the uh, in a profession who is, uh, who is actually consulting in the beef production management system. But I met Peter uh, more fully when he became, or we became, I think, pretty well at the same time, a member of the Rotary Club of East Strathcona, or uh, Edmonton Strathcona, used to be called the Friendly Club, and uh, where actually we both get, uh, got involved with the club and then knew more about Peter when he got involved with his, in his business with uh, electronic RFID business of tagging uh, animals. Uh, I was quite interested with his project on the wheelchair. That's one that I actually tried to get more involved with and uh, for some reason that project didn't continue as well as it should have been. But according to Peter, more than 3,000 new wheelchairs were distributed in uh, Mexico, Panama, Indonesia, and the Dominican Republic. So a major project uh, was sponsored by Peter when he was with the Edmonton Strathcona Club. Uh, he was also president uh, of the Strathcona Club. Uh, between uh, 2007 and 2008, and uh, attended the uh, RI convention in Salt Lake City, 2007. So uh, I, it's a pleasure to have again Peter as a member of our club, and uh, as you see, is is really a friendly guy, uh, and in spite of sometimes is is uh, how do I say? Dutch attitude toward things, uh, and, but I would like to again uh, have you, Peter, make your presentation uh, for uh, to the Rotary, your classification presentation. Thank you, Jean Michel, for uh, that very nice introduction. And yes, it. Um, uh, we go back a long time, and uh, being a classification talk, it's appropriate that we, uh, we talk about that, too. Uh, when I joined Rotary in, uh, first of all, I want to make it a little bit different. 
um, in that if you have a question and you know I'm, I'm open I want to keep it as informal as possible just click on your uh, your screen and I will see that you'd like to ask a question at any time and uh, I will accommodate and uh, and try and answer as much because I I much rather talk about something that okay Delvin go ahead what's wrong is it true that if you ain't Dutch you ain't much hundred <laughs> percent true <laughs> and Ali can vouch Ali can vouch for that and Ramiro can really vouch for that too no doubt <laughs> thanks that's uh, I I didn't get there yet I'm still in Canada I haven't gone back to Holland yet um, anyway when I uh, when I joined Rotary in 2001 uh, my classification was electronic identification and the reason for that was that I knew for um, since my university years that I would be uh, if I were to join a service club that I would be uh, joining Rotary. That's because my brother-in-law was a Rotarian uh, back in Holland when I was uh, a student. Uh, he was a little bit older than I am and so he was practicing as a dentist and I got exposed uh, as I spent a lot of time with them uh, uh, due to Rotary at um, that young an age. Now uh, moving to Canada in 1976 shortly after I graduated from the University in Utrecht as a uh, veterinarian, as a matter of fact, nine days after my graduation. Mm -hmm. You understand, if you know me a little bit, they were all happy for me to see me go. Mm -hmm. And uh, let them go, let them go to some other country. And I did. I went to Alberta and I practiced for more than uh, 25 years uh, in different locations in Northeast uh, Alberta, Athabasca, Lac La Biche, Lloydminster, or Drossen, Greater Edmonton area. And in 1998, 99 I got involved in a different business the electronic identification of um, uh, especially small animals as the microchip as uh, people know it uh, and uh, identifies the pets and helps them be reunited with their owners uh, in cases they get uh, uh, they, they get lost and so uh, when that happened um, of course, we started a new company, and uh, I was still doing uh, veterinary work for my old practice first, and later on do locums in, around the area, and in the meantime, we were building up. But what it did mean was that I was able to now spend time and uh, dedicate the time that I wanted to dedicate to Rotary. And so my business partner, John Frolic, introduced me to somebody outside of, of uh, Sherwood Park. I didn't want to be in, in a club in Sherwood Park. I wanted to I meet those people anyway as a, that's where our office was. So he knew Dennis Freeman who then uh, sponsored me um, in the uh, Rotary Club of Edmonton Strathcona. And I joined there in 2001 and being in the electronic identification business um, I uh, had the, uh, identif the classification of electronic identification. Um, also, this was the time that you know more and more uh, people could be in one club with one uh, classification. But I, there's very very few clubs where there is more than one veterinarian uh, that is in there uh, under veterinary medicine. However, the electronic identification uh, helped also uh, to. Uh, as I was traveling quite a bit, developing that business, uh, and uh, um, first of all, introducing myself, being a veterinarian, but then also with the electronic identification part. It also shows the diversity that veterinarians can have uh, in their um, in their profession. Uh, you will find them everywhere, from politicians, just. Watch the uh, elections. Uh, Richard Starkey, uh, who uh, is looking to become the leader for the Conservative Party, took my position when I left Lloydminster. He just graduated from university in 1983, and uh, and he uh, then uh, took over my position at the clinic in uh, Lloydminster. So I'm watching. I think he would make a, a great leader for the for the party. Um, 
when I uh, joined the Rotary Club of Edmonton Strathcona, um, I did different uh, positions on the board, became president in 2007, 2008, and uh, subsequently to that took on the project, a program I should say, of, of wheelchairs. That's a whole different story all by itself, uh, again too, but um, you know, that, that, that materialized on uh, um, the convention in Salt Lake City and uh, was in 2007. The Rotary Club Edmonton Strathcona um, makes the point of sending their incoming president, president-elect, uh, to, uh, uh, to the international convention and has a uh, budget for that to help the cost of, uh, to offset the cost for that event. Um, I was frustrated with, uh, with shipping things and um, uh, thought, okay, if uh, Rotary can uh, eradicate polio, maybe they can do something about NAFTA. And that would make it easier to ship things across the borders because I had problems with that. And um, on the Sunday evening of the convention, I uh, uh, was going to have dinner and sit at the table and a bunch of other Rotarians, other people came, they turned out to be Rotarians, joined me. And to this date, we had a lovely evening, as Rotarians do, and to this date we still argue about who invited whom, because our meeting there grew to a pro program of distributing wheelchairs. Because when I suggested that maybe they could help and try and solve a problem and get NAFTA, uh, you know, like NAF to get it controlled. They knew exactly what they said. We know a club in Mexico, and we have a club here, and a club in the United States, and a club in Canada, and we'll and we have a wheelchair program that you will find very interesting. And a month later, got a phone call, and a month after that, I went and joined and uh, joined them in a distribution in Leon, Mexico, and that's where I had my rotary moment because that's when I was present as the wheelchairs were handed, were handed out to those people that um, didn't have a way to get around where you put people in a wheelchair that all of a sudden uh, are able to become more, much more independent of what they have been in the past. And after I came back, um, I was sold on that and say, okay, this is something that we could do, that we could work on, and subsequently uh, got um, four or five different districts involved. Um, we had more than 15 clubs in our district involved, and uh, we, we indeed distributed wheelchairs in, uh, in Leon, Mexico, twice, in Panama, in Indonesia, and in the Dominican Republic, and we've done over 3,200. Uh, and with that, it's satisfying because the numbers, that is, one person gets a wheelchair, but directly uh, and indirectly, it affects about 10 people for each wheelchair. So uh, you do change the lives, not only of the person that sits in the wheelchair, but it, you also change the life of the people around it who will have much more time and uh, to do other things while that person can, uh, can now uh, mo move further. And like Jean said, um, I had different ideas or other plans of trying to, uh, what we need to do is have the local people involved in order to sustain um, the project and sustain uh, the, the service of mobility. And um, we had an idea and a plan in place uh, to try and uh, get that established and have a center in uh, here in the Dominican Republic and uh, where we would get parts from China to put the wheelchairs together, where we would be able to put people to work to put wheelchairs together and then uh, distribute them first in the district here in the country here. Haiti, of course, is very close by and beyond that uh, in the Caribbean and, and further. However, uh, money did not come through 
because that's always, of course, a limiting factor. However, my dream is, and uh, we, we were supposed to have a coffee chat the other day, and it wasn't, but uh, what your plans are, uh, and I have some plans to try and see if we can get a Rotarian Action Group in place, and that would be for mobility. And uh, that is a major, major undertaking, and it is something that I will pursue in Atlanta when we are there to uh, to to see whether that we'll be able to do something like that um, as well. And so, uh, not many people are aware of what Rotarian Action Groups are and do, and uh, you will in due time find out because. You may have noticed um, I'm not afraid to send things electronically and speak up about things, uh, you know, with that too. And uh, um, I'm looking forward to uh, to to work on that in the future as well. But now, as a classified veterinary medicine Rotarian, because uh, when I moved to uh, Dominican Republic and spend most of, uh, of my time here, um, I would not meet the requirement for, um, you know, the time needed for, uh, you know, meeting um, uh, the attendance. And so I uh, switched from uh, the Strathcona Club to the Rotary Club of San Juan de la Maguana, which is in the town where, uh, where, we, uh, where we are, where Ileana and I live. And um, I was for one year a member of that club. And um, there are some problems with that. And my main problem was the language. Communication with the Rotarians and the people was very difficult. And a good part of that is my fault. But then I spent a lot of time on the computer. I'm still doing uh, you know, the, my new business with the calcium, chlor uh, uh, calcium chloride castration project and uh, so that would really tie uh, tie me up a lot of time and um, even though I went to school and learned a lot of different languages I'm having trouble uh, mastering the Spanish language and I speak Dutch if I don't speak English I will speak Dutch with Ellie I'm not even gonna try talking Spanish with her even if we are together in uh, in Atlanta uh, when we're staying there so that made me decide to, uh, on July 1st, uh, join the Rotary Club of, uh, uh, the E-Club of uh, Canada One. Also, because it's in the best district in the world, and uh, because I have a lot of friends there, a lot of people that I have met over the years, and, uh, and I think it, it is a great, great opportunity to, uh, to continue with do that. So, um, I, I would like to, to stop here uh, because of the time frame, but also I want to leave it open for Indeed. Delvin, of course, shut up everybody with his nice question, and uh, <laughs> but there may be some other questions that you guys want to uh, want to uh, to ask, and I will try and answer. I'm sure there is something else that uh, that you would like to to know, and uh, I can tell a lot of stories. Um, like James Harriet, we all are James Harriet. Just James Harriet was the one who was managing uh, to put it in words. But one thing that a lot of people don't realize: James Harriet didn't write about the people until they died. When they're they're alive, you didn't hear about them. That's why he wrote from before the Second World War. I do have. Five years of uh, veterinary medicine in Lac La Biche, and I have the diaries. They're not really diaries, but my secretary wrote down if there was nothing or if there was a lot of things happening, and I have them here. And one day I'm going to put a few, a uh, few of those stories back together too. But um, there's lots of things you can you can tell about as veterinarian. Delvin, Peter, first of all, um, the fact that you're not only Dutch, but also educated at the University of Utrecht, stands you in good stead in this household. That's where my <laughs> wife's uncle went to veterinary school as well. Okay. But uh, my question is about your wheelchair work. Was this wheelchair work done in conjunction with the Wheelchair Foundation of Canada, or was it an independent program you put together? 
all the wheelchairs, not all the wheelchairs, but yes, that was with Wheelchair Foundation Canada, Christiana Fleschner. By the way, in the March Fellowship Assembly, uh, Christiana will be presenting to our, uh, to our club. We have scheduled that. And uh, so she will be talking about that. But there, the interesting thing is that we did some distributions in Mexico with local Rotarians there a guy who has a factory that makes auto parts, okay, and he had the connections in, in, in China and he would bring a container in and we could, for the same amount of money that we utilized uh, for a container uh, for the Wheelchair Foundation Canada, give twice as many wheelchairs and the same quality and the same kind of wheelchairs as well. Yeah, the reason I ask is because um, Sharon and I both know Christiana very well. She was a classmate of mine in the uh, Centennial President's class of 0405, and uh, she's a wonderful person. I, all the club will look yes. forward to hearing yes. from her. Yeah, we will uh, see her. And, and Christiana and I have, have had a you know really strong working relationship. She came in that first year when we had uh, our district conference and joined us at the booth in uh, the Friendship House of Friendship and uh, got things going you know from there. So um, she went. I, I went with her to to Panama to Indonesia and she's been here in Dominican Republic as well. So um, it's awesome, um, uh, awesome connection. Excellent. Now, well done, Peter. Jean Michel? Well, thank you, Peter. Uh, anybody with uh, questions before we close and move on? Well, I'm glad you didn't send your video about uh, what you do with calcium chloride because that would have, <laughs> <laughs> would have been quite interesting to everybody. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, Peter. We can do that some other time, and, uh, but it's uh, but it it is it just on an aside. I spoke uh, for about twenty minutes today with a psychologist out of uh, sorry yeah a psychologist out of the United Kingdom, uh, out of England, and they're working on a pro project. It's called Making the Link, and the link is of aggression in uh, dogs with its effect on children and subsequently the effect of children with aggression and abuse etc for at a later time and uh, especially in in some of the Eastern European countries where they have a major issue and this is an issue around the world so uh, I'm sure someday we will talk more extensively about calcium chloride and sex <laughs> oh, 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 ears perked up. <laughs> okay, I will bring some, Ramiro. <laughs> Is that your new classification? Then uh, talk about uh, sexology. <laughs> oh, that could be another one, yes. You know that veterinarians make most of their money at the rear end of the animals anyway. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I think we got to move on. Thank you very much, Peter. Well, thank you both. Thank you, Peter. That was wonderful, learning more about your profession. And uh, I already knew quite a bit about you, but <laughs> always something new to learn. <laughs> yeah, it's getting hot in here. Must be all that talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just Manzanillo. Or is it Rome? Yeah, it's uh, Anyway, it's muggy. Um, Great, let's move on to the last part. I think it's the last part of our program. No, there's two more parts here. Um, I will have, uh, I'd like to invite uh, David. David, uh, if you're not all black on your camera, would you turn on your camera, please? Um, you all know that um, we, have attracted a large number of guests to our weekly meetings. And a few years ago, we started um, awarding or drawing for uh, Paul Harris, $100 Paul Harris credits for, um, for our attending guests. And um, well, somehow the, the draw was not done, so we have the pleasure today to draw the name for the last quarter. Uh, uh, David, would you uh, explain a little bit more and tell us which 
quarter this is that we're doing. I think it's the last quarter of 2016. Yes, Elliot, it was the uh, October, November, December quarter. And uh, I have the names of all the uh, guests and their attendants, and there's a total of 79. So if you can uh, come up with a number somewhere between 1 and 79, and I can tell you whose name that is. Okay, I will choose a very important year in my mother's life, 1948. <laughs> That's not between 1 and 79, come on. 48. <laughs> Let me... Um, That's Robert Matthews. Robert Matthews, and where is he from? Well, I don't have that information uh, right in front of me here, so oh. I'll have to uh, dig that out. And uh, all I've got is the list with the uh, just that he's made the donation, and he did that on the twenty-first of November. Wow! <clears throat> and uh, oh. I'll get all his information and contact him. And uh, great. And. Um, We'll look forward to seeing his photograph, and um, like our last winner did, uh, do a very nice, uh, Joe Capron did a very nice greeter presentation, and um, I'll be in touch with uh, Robert tomorrow, and um, we'll can, the club will contribute $100 uh, to the uh, Rotary Foundation um, in, his, uh, in his name, the Paul Harris. Great. And then Robert Matthews is from Calgary Heritage Park. Oh, oh, good. Oh, okay. We'll put that oh, in, the, on the in the bulletin then. Here, Once we hear. Here's a regular. Uh, here's a regular attender. Uh, I'm, I'm very lucky that we've got uh, lots of uh, regular attendees uh, um, from Ontario to out of the West Coast, but uh, also from the U.S. Great. But thank you very much, John. For yeah, maybe we can put that uh, in the bulletin for this, this year. Um, I have just a little bit of news to tell uh, that David, uh, I met some people here from um, South Calgary. They're close to Cochrane and uh, they happen to be Dutch. And of course, we always connect with the Dutch and uh, they're working on a project here in Manzanillo. And, uh, you know, as a Dutch person, I need to do a lot of talking, and I always talk about everything I'm involved in. So I talked about Rotary, and they were very interested. And I asked David to forward me the name of the president of the club. And uh, they are now both, both Astrid and Jack, are now members of the Cochrane Club in District 5360. So oh, I'm excited about that. Yeah, so, you know, even though we don't always manage to get new members, like we recruit members, we don't always succeed in members recruiting them in our own club, but we can recruit members no matter where they are. So, great. Yeah, I just wanted to share that. Well, okay. Thanks, Thank you, David, for all your hard work. And um, uh, we have one more little... Um, some announcements. Um, on February 23rd, our club is celebrating uh, our fourth anniversary, and our next fellowship assembly takes place on February 21st. And we have confirmed uh, Director Dean Roars, who is a good friend. She's from Vancouver. See, a lot of these Rotarians that I've connected with, uh, like Will Wilkinson, somehow through my years in Rotary, they become famous people in Rotary. And here I still am in, <laughs> anyway, but it's nice, you know, knowing these people and see them um, continue, continue. Oh, Ellie, Ellie, stop it. You all need to know that Ellie is famous in District 5370 and many points in the global atmosphere. Oh, thank you, Ben, <laughs> so nice of you. Um, so that's very exciting, and um, I, I will, Peter and I will connect with Frank to see what uh, his wishes are for this special anniversary. We will be inviting um, all of our District 5370 leaders, including Betty, and um, our District Governor, Laura, has also already confirmed she will be there. 
And uh, please talk to your fellow Rotarians and even friends. We encourage you to have pods. We are planning a pod with uh, six uh, Rotarians here from this area and uh, hope to have a birthday cake here. So, uh, yeah, some Americans, some Canadians, and some of Mexican. them Mexicans, and some may even, um, we may even be able to recruit, recruit some of them for our club. So please share your ideas about how you would like to see this particular anniversary take shape, and um, please take part in it. Um, the other event, which is very important, and um, several of our eClub members have already registered, and maybe Peter would like to talk on this. We're going to Atlanta. Peter. As a matter of fact, I booked our flight today. And uh, so Ileana and I will be arriving, um, uh, we're flying directly from Santo Domingo to uh, Atlanta and arrive at about 5 o'clock Atlanta time p.m. And uh, last June I rented through Airbnb a home and the home is about less than 10 minutes walk from the convention center and uh, there will be, uh, it has four bedrooms and so Elia Romero and um, Frank and Tammy and Vicky will all be staying in that in that uh, that home. What we are also planning is a uh, well call it a pod, but this will be uh, where we will invite other people from the district to attend if they would like to as well. And on the Tuesday of the convention, uh, we will have a cocktail party. Uh, so that's not a pod. But that's kind of a Delwyn pod, I guess, <laughs> a cocktail party uh, at the house uh, close to the convention center. So uh, as you well know, there's all kinds of things that are happening uh, throughout the convention with every evening, there are events, etc., etc. And I know we talked with, uh, with District Governor Laura, uh, we didn't want it to coincide with anything that they are planning because typically the district would have, as there are over 120 people from the district uh, to go there uh, into Atlanta as well. We don't want it to coincide, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So we will, maybe what we can do is do some sort of a uh, online thing and have a computer on because we'll have lots of computers there uh, as well. So um, I don't know if there's others that were, others that were planning on coming as well. Lynn Tonoski was uh, originally planning on coming but has to decline for other reasons and uh, so I don't know of anybody else from our club that is going to be there um, as well. But we're really looking forward to that, uh, to the convention, to uh, spending time in Atlanta and spending some time with my uh, club members. That would be awesome. Thanks Ali. Great. Well, this was another wonderful fellowship assembly, and thank you all for joining us. You too. He's a guest. Ramiro is a guest. Um, <laughs> he should qualify for uh, the draw. Paul also. Harris. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got to. Well, he's got to do the proper reform, uh, you know. But he's not a Rotarian, or is he? Oh yes. What? He's, oh, yeah. he's going to he's going to other club. I think I have more years than you have in Rotary. No, 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 I know. But you're, a member. <laughs> so you're a member of which club then? What do you mean? What club are you a member of? I'm, I'm yeah. a member of the Osoyo's Rotary Club. in. Um, oh, yeah, but they don't count. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> uh, so uh, we hope uh, we may not have a quiz in February. We have other activities and we don't know yet what. But uh, Peter and I will talk about that and we'll hope to include as many, pos uh, many members as possible. And, uh, you know, this is pretty well our regular attendees. And we like to see more of our members uh, attending. So please mention it to everybody. And, uh, but it's great seeing you all. And uh, we're happy that we're not wearing heavy sweaters. Um, <laughs> And it's not minus 42 like it was last last week Wait. in Alberta. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. But uh, have a wonderful evening, everybody. 
and uh, please stay connected and um, see you all next time. Viva Rotary. Good night. Viva Rotary. Good night, all. Good night, everybody. Thanks very much. Uh, Talk good soon, Sterling. <laughs> Talk soon. Bye, Sharon. Bye. Bye. Tot de volgende keer. Tot de volgende Dag. keer. Dag. Dag, Sterling. What's that? How long is it